So there's one more thing on this particular topic that I want to talk about, okay? Real quick, okay? There's one more article. Texas health providers are suspending gender-affirming care for teens in response to the GOP efforts. This was written a couple of days ago, eight days ago. Hospitals across the state have already started restricting critical treatments such as health as healthcare providers fear legal consequences and worry they could lose their medical licenses. Meanwhile, teenagers are already leaving the state to get care or avoiding medical care altogether. Now, we're going to read the rest of this article, but I want to talk about this because I think there's something interesting to note here. Something you should note about this article is that Currently, the federal government has put a stay on the governor's orders. So you so wait a minute. Why are these bad things happening to trans people even though the federal government intervened to stay the order? The answer is it doesn't matter if the order is actually upheld. The goal is the fear. And the fear leads to people not taking risks. If you make giving trans care risky, there are a lot of people who are not going to take that risk, and that means trans people can't get the care that they get, which means a lot of them are going to die. And it's interesting because a recurring theme through all of this has been me pointing out that no matter what the conservatives call these laws, no matter what they say these laws are about, they're about elimination. They are about driving trans people onto the margins where hopefully in the conservative mind, trans people will die. You understand. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. The law, the, 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 uh, the executive order that the governor in Texas gave, which for those of you who don't know, the governor ordered investigations into doctors and families who had, who have trans kids, because according to him, he believes giving medically necessary care to transgender children is child uh, is a uh, child predation which is an absurd statement an absolutely insane statement to anybody who knows anything about the process but they don't and they don't care about the process because the goal is to do exactly this hospitals across the state have already started restricting critical treatments as healthcare providers fear legal consequences and worry they could lose their medical licenses this is the chilling effect that they aim to have the chilling effect that has the exact same effect as banning it. Not quite as aggressive, but the same thing. If they ban it outright, well then trans people are just pushed a little faster into the margins. But if trans people, for whatever reason, can't get care because everyone's too afraid to give it because there's legal threats on the horizon, well guess what? The conservatives are still winning. They're winning because trans people can't get the care. Aaron Green says, it's so frustrating being told all the time to watch language or be careful of optics by allies when they literally don't say a word about the people who are taking our rights away. Isn't it interesting? Isn't it wild how frequently, just be more polite, just can't you stop being so toxic about it all the time? I bet most of those hospitals are private companies too, afraid of legal costs. Many of them are. Infernatrix Sophia says, I'm moving to Portland soon to help with a trans communal effort for culture and health. One of the people in it is working on a method with CRISPR to edit, edit genes to turn testes into pseudo ovaries, freeing us from the need for meds. That is wild. Now I'm regretting getting an orchiectomy. Hopefully maybe somebody can give me a, a, a donor, a donor pair so I can have my own little pseudo ovaries. That'd be great. Uh, but, uh, but, but anyway. Let's read the rest of this article. I want to read the rest of this. Let's talk about the details, huh? 
Jennifer's 15-year-old son had been on testosterone therapy for only two weeks when she got a call from his doctor. The exchange felt very clandestine, she said. He calls from his personal number, calls my personal number, and doesn't use my child's name because he's scared somebody might be recording the conversation, Jennifer said. The doctor told her he could no longer prescribe her son's treatment. The medical malpractice insur insurance character, he explained, had stopped, cover had stopped covering doctors who offered hormone therapy to minors. Isn't that interesting how insurance can be used to wage war? It doesn't even have to be illegal. It's perfectly legal for an insurance carrier to deny coverage. Did you know? Did you know? Fun fact for the younger people in this audience. Did you know that before Obamacare, being trans was considered a pre-existing condition? And if your doctor diagnosed you with 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 a uh, with GID, gender identity disorder, that you would be denied coverage? Did you know that? Until Obama. It was that recent that if you if people found out you were trans, you would not get insurance. You would not be insurable. Do you know how fucked you are if you can't get health insurance in America? And let's take a look again how insurance, how capitalism structures right here are being used. The doctor told her he could no longer prescribe her son's treatment. The medical malpractice insurance character, carrier had stopped covering doctors who offer hormone therapy to minors. The doctor's call came a week after government Greg, uh, after Governor Greg Abbott in, in ordered investigations into parents and licensed facilities that provide standard medical care to transgender teenagers. Abbott's order was based on a non-binding interpretation from Attorney General Ken, Ken Paxton that classified puberty blockers, hormone therapy, and surgical care as child abuse. By the way, this right here, the Attorney General Ken Paxton, uh, uh, like uh, opinion is so bullshit you can't even imagine first of all this is a political thing attorney general ken paxton is not a medical expert he is not a psychology expert he is not a gender expert he is not even the person supposed to make this decision he just gave a legal opinion which was then weaponized to marginalize trans people but you see how much damage has been done even though none of this is legitimate even though the government put a stay on the on the uh on the uh executive order the damage has already been done and trans people are already suffering because as it turns out our system isn't really designed to protect anybody except for corporations and conservatives Jennifer asked the test Texas Tribune not to disclose her last name because she fears the state could launch an investigation into her into her family for obtaining hormone therapy. Leading medical organizations across the country say gender affirming care is the best way to provide care for transgender children. It primarily involves choices around names, pronouns, and clothing that align with a gender's uh, with a child's gender identity. It can eventually include puberty blockers and hormone treatment. Surgical care is rarely, if ever, performed on teenagers. On Monday, a state appeals court reinstated a lower court's injunction temporarily halting the investigation of transgender kids' parents and medical providers. The court says the injunction will remain in place while an appeal plays out. But in response to the GOP's recent efforts to limit scientifically-backed gender-affirming care, LGBT advocates say hospitals, insurance companies, and pharmacies have already started restricting critical treatment for fear of legal consequences. Healthcare providers worry they could lose their medical licenses if they don't abide by the directive. U.S. Surgeon General Vivek Murthy told the Tribune that Abbott's directive has had a chilling effect on healthcare practitioners, hospital systems, and clinics. What's happening right now is the state inserting itself between doctors, patients, and families, Murthy said, and that runs counter to the integrity of the doctor-patient relationship. Transgender teenagers are now grappling with narrowing access to medical care in a state where adequate, inclusive health care is already hard to come by. The lack of access has given some to secure a substandard quality of care and others to stop seeking care altogether. Now, it's very interesting to me, and I don't want to re resurrect. I don't want to resurrect an old issue. But very recently, we had a conversation about medical supply lines, didn't we? A lot of these people who just a few months ago would have been able to go to the pharmacy and get their medicines are now having to either choose between not transitioning 
detransitioning, forcibly having their body change in a way that they don't want, or going into the black market. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't blame somebody who's being denied unjustly by the state going and seeking out solutions on their own. I don't blame them at all. Not even a little. In fact, I think that's kind of based. This is why there is a large support for DIY HRT, which should be done carefully, well-researched, intelligently, but is nonetheless a valid path for many people who are being discriminated against by the state, where the state is going out of its way to persecute these people. DIYHRT.github.io Now, the reason why I find it important to talk about this issue is because, believe it or not, I've talked about this issue for a long time. I have gone and I have warned people that this was going to be necessary. I have warned people that the red states were going to start issuing medical interruptions of trans people. And what we're looking at now, by the way, is trans people and their families fleeing from Texas. And it's up to queer people elsewhere, which is us, to help as many as we can. And we might not be able to help them all, which is unfortunate and sad. But I believe that if we all individually care about the issue enough and we take our and we put our minds to it and we keep our eyes peeled and we talk to each other about it, that we can probably save a lot of lives. That if we do stuff together, if we communicate and pool our resources, share our resources, share our information, tell one another about our communities, that we can actually save lives, unironically. If you're trans in my audience, there's a very good chance you wish you could have transitioned earlier. It's, it's a hot button sensitive issue for a lot of trans people. And it's almost a meme in the community that trans people don't have a childhood. That we lose a childhood because we spend uh, our young life it, often grappling with dysphoria and being told to be someone that we're not. Often violently. Okay? The reason why it's so common for trans people to be abused is not because trans being abused makes you trans it's because if you're effeminate as a guy or if you're masculine as a girl quote unquote you get beat up you get called names and it's even worse if you're trans so when i say there's a lot of trans people who can completely understand the desire of wishing that they could have transitioned earlier i want you to think about this and cis people who can understand what i'm talking about non-trans people who are in my audience right now and listening. Right now, what is happening in Texas is delaying something that is of the deepest level of importance to a lot of people, okay? Living in the right body when you only have one life to live, when you only get to spend one life on this planet, living as yourself is fucking important. I would say it's almost one of the most important things in the world being able to live as yourself in a world that you only get to be in one time and all of these kids are being denied that they are spending years of their life in agony often and if not in agony not able to live as themselves because of the actions of an of of a of the state and lots of people like to say, oh, well, you know, America's not so bad. You're right. America is not so bad. But lots of places in America are fucking terrible. Lots of people in America are getting discriminated against and oppressed. It isn't about America. It's about the fact that there are real people suffering right now because of the decisions of disgusting, violent, prejudiced, transphobic politicians, public figures, 
and all manner of other advocates, all of whom have names and faces and addresses. And also, there is a sea of trans people and their families who need all the help that they can get. What I am saying is, there is an abundance of work to be done. There is an abundance of very good, life-saving work to be done. And I need as many people to start looking for it. <sighs> That's been the theme of this entire stream. And that has been the theme of this entire segment. In which I talk about a whole lot of very, very depressing topics. And it leaves me feeling pretty sad. However, I have survived. Trans people I know have survived. We've survived together. And I have helped other people survive. I've helped other trans people survive when I had the ability. And I'm proud of that. It's one of the things that makes me feel the best about myself. Is that I know. Maybe nobody else will ever know. But I know when I helped save a life. And you can do that too. And you can have that feeling for yourself. The knowledge that you reached out and helped another queer person step into a future that you put one brick in place to build a better future. And listen, Bromine. Bromine says, I'm trying, but survival is the only thing I can really ac accomplish. Rule number one is do not die. If you're in the position of attempting to not die, don't worry. You do what you can do. If you're in the position of attempting to, of like, where you're on that level of the edge, you fight for that first. You help later. And try to get as, help, as much help as you can. People out here may be able to help you. Who knows? And unfortunately, I have to say another thing, which is trans people in my audience, younger trans folks in my audience. First of all, you are not alone. There are many of us out there who are all fighting for the same goal. Liberation. We are in this together. We Our struggle is shared, even if it doesn't always seem like it. That's the first part. But secondly, I need you to be brave. Okay? Young trans people out there, I need you to be fucking brave. Okay? I need you to be courageous. I need you to not just survive, but to fight above and beyond just your survival. To fight for a better world. I need you to be as brave as possible. And I know sometimes your life might put you in a position where you have to make some really difficult decisions in order to stay as yourself. You're going to have to deal with some transphobia from people. It's not good. It's not fair. And it will hurt. But I need you to be strong. I need you to be brave. Because I, and I hope that you do as well, want to see a future in which queer people can live freely. In which no longer is it common for us to see fucking stories written about people threatening us with the firing line where we're no longer teetering on the edge of 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 genocide i want to see a world in which queer people can live as free as everyone else so please be brave i know it's hard i know that you're probably going to have to adapt in all kinds of ways uh i know i have I know that I'm not the same person as I was in multiple ways going into my, my transition. That the hardships that I experienced as a result of my transition have changed me. But also, it's worth it. Even when it's bad. Even when it's not fair. It's worth it. So, steal yourself. Commit yourself to living. Do not fucking die. And fight. Okay. Big bad bat. What's your advice for queer people living where it's illegal to be queer? Get the hell out. Get out. And it is scary. It is scary to hear that. It's scary to hear get the fuck out. But it is much easier to find and build a new safe place um, than, uh, than it is to try and change the state government or the national government of where you are. And you will thank yourself for, for taking the effort and the time and the hardship to get yourself to a safer location where you can build a foundation. If you're living in a place where you cannot exist as yourself, 
You should only do that if you have no other choice. If you are truly trapped there, find allies and help each other fight. But other than that, I always advise people, do not stay in a place where it is illegal for you to exist. It is very difficult to fight a war against uh, uh, an entrenched state all by yourself when you're scraping for life. You can always fight again if you live another day. Okay? You don't owe your country. You don't owe your state anything. Now, there are sometimes networks of people that can make it safe for those who can't leave. And sometimes you won't be able to move. And I understand that. But my first advice is always, if you can get out, get out. Get somewhere safe, find some allies, and go for it. That's true. And you're not alone. You're not alone. Fuck, I have a household of my household, my little poly house, our little pack of people, uh, is, is a bunch of queers from all over the country. And we all came together and found a way to survive here. And that was before I even started streaming, just so you know. Queer people can come together and help each other. Hell yeah. Good. Good, Aaron Green. Live. You are, you are joining me in living communism. Isn't that the coolest thing? Everybody always wants to talk about organizing this, organizing that, and usually what they mean is writing out a plan. But that's not really what that means. Living, living your values is intrinsically rewarding, okay? It really is. And guess what? As it turns out, yes, a bunch of people mutually coming together and taking good care of each other and not charging each other money to live together, but rather working out together against the problems of the world, fighting together to take care of one another. Yeah, that actually is communism. Wow. It, it turns out that's actually communism. Wow. And if everybody did that, it's literally also a family. Yeah, but not not the capital F family. It's really funny. Actually, this is a really this is a small little side note, but I got like super questioned by one of the houses that I was that I was applying to. They were like, "So, uh, you listed that you have five people that you want to move in uh into this apartment. Is that your 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 wife and kids?" And I was like, "Well, it's my family." And they were like, "Oh yeah, so how old are your kids?" And I said, "Okay, it's a family of choice like and they were like um and i was like yeah we're just we we all just stick together and they didn't get that idea they didn't understand it because the idea of the patriarchal patrilineal family is so ingrained in our culture that like people literally can't conceive of other types of family structure and that's why i generally avoid the word family even though it is it is a form of family it is a togetherness it is a family made of 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 uh, uh of mutual agreements and and mutual uh history it's a chosen family and and the truth is that that type of family is stronger than a family of blood blood we can't see our blood we can't uh, there is nothing that makes people who are your blood family treat you well i know that firsthand i was disowned just for being fucking trans not kidding that's an actual thing i dealt with w many years ago over 10 years ago i was disowned for being trans blood means nothing our connections mean everything Aaron Green says, my chosen family has been far and away better to me than my blood family. That's usually how it is. Of course, a partner is family you choose. And I think multiple partners is multiple family members that you choose. And I think that it's a good thing. I think that people coming together and mutually agreeing to work together and take care of one another is a fucking base thing. Turns out that's the basis for communism is the idea that people, what, what's it say? Uh, 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 from each, from each, according to their ability to each, according to their need. 
or the way I prefer to say it, to each according to their need and from each according to their ability? Huh. Almost like that's the literal basis for everything that lefties claim to believe in. Family. 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 What I mean is it's d it's dumb that normies can't grasp chosen family. That's literally what a partner is. Yeah, yeah, it's ridiculous. But that's how ideal that's that's how overwhelming, highly stratified, highly categoric uh, high, highly categorized ideologies work. They see a family as mom, dad, children, house as opposed to ah, a family is a structure of people that come together and take care of each other so that they live. Yeah, so chosen family is is an important concept that a lot of people just don't seem to get. Anyway, I think that's more or less everything for this extended segment about trans rights in America. Um, 